Hi, my name is Sanjay Chala. I'm a student at Georgia Tech. As part of a class project, I'm here to present to you an article on the scratch reflex. The title of this article is Spinal Cord Segments Containing Key Elements of the Central Pattern Generators for Three Forms of the Scratch Reflex in the Turtle. It was published by Morton and Stein in 1989 in the Journal of Neuroscience. Let's begin by looking at the purpose and approach of the study outlined in this article. The purpose of this study was to investigate the scratch reflex by closely studying spinal central pattern generators. A turtle model was used for these studies. Turtles have three types of scratch responses, rostral, pocket, and caudal, as outlined in the picture. In this study, complete rostrocaudal transections were performed on turtle spinal cords. The minimum length and specific spinal segments required for the generation of each scratch form were observed. Additionally, rhythmogenesis and motor pattern losses upon further transactions were also observed. Given the purpose and methods, let's define a few key terms important to understanding this study. The first important term is central pattern generator. Central pattern generators are a set of neurons within the central nervous system, which can function without movement-related sensory feedback and can produce a sequence of activities which underlie behavior. The next key concept is understanding the turtle spinal column. The turtle spinal column is composed of 8 cervical, 10 dorsal, 2 sacral, and 16 caudal segments. The receptive fields for the rostral, pocket, and caudal scratch have been listed on this slide. Lastly, the hind limb enlargement of the turtle is defined to be the D8 through S2 spinal segments. These segments control motor outputs to the hind limbs which perform the scratch movements. The results from this study were fairly straightforward. It was discovered that the rostral scratch could be produced by as few as five to six spinal segments. These segments are the D5 through the D9 or the D3 through the D8 spinal segments. In the case of the pocket scratch, it was observed that this reflex would be produced by simply the D8 through the D10 spinal segments. Additionally, it was found that the D7 or the D8 spinal segments were capable of rhythmogenesis to stimuli within their respective receptive fields. Lastly, as for the caudal scratch, it was found that the D8 through the N segments are required in order to produce this reflex. Now let's get a sense for the results on a slightly broader scale. It was found that the posterior 40 to 80 percent of the hind limb enlargement was not necessary for the rostral or pocket scratch reflexes. Similarly, it was found that the anterior segment of the enlargement was not necessary for a normal caudal scratch reflex. Despite these differences, it was found that the key elements of the central pattern generators for each of the scratch reflexes reside in the D7 through D10 spinal segments. Overall, it was found that the pattern generating capacity of the anterior hind limb enlargement was greater than the posterior. This result is actually supported by findings in other animal models, such as the cat. Lastly, the observations from this study support the hypothesis that central pattern generators producing different motor patterns for the hind limb share neuronal elements. That concludes the summary of the article reviewed. Now, critically analyzing the article, a few strengths and weaknesses are of mention. In terms of the positive aspects, the scope of the results are well explained within the article. Additionally, future work necessary to further consolidate and build upon the findings in this study are very clearly articulated. Now, moving on to some of the negative aspects, there is a weak justification initially for some of the elements of the experiment. For example, it's not well explained why the minimum length required to generate a scratch reflex is studied and not simply the spinal segments responsible for the rhythmogenesis and motor pattern generation of each of these scratch reflexes. By the end, however, the results from all aspects of the experiments come together to form a cohesive story, but the reader is left somewhat lacking in background at the beginning. Additionally, while the results are well articulated and presented, 
they're not very well connected back to the scratch reflex as much as they are to the general concept of central pattern generators. The background of this article suggests that this article seeks to focus on the scratch reflex predominantly, but the conclusion focuses almost entirely on the nature of spinal central pattern generators as elucidated by studies on the scratch reflex. Thank you for taking the time to view this review.